Hey, this is Guy back carving. I had a request to do a cowboy. Here's one before it's painted. Here's one after it's painted. This one I carved the eyes in. This one painted on. There's a different style here. This is a piece of aspen I just cut, so I probably have a little bit of shavings on me. This piece is really a monster piece, but it makes a fun looking cowboy. So this is one and three quarters. This here is two and three quarters. Then from here to here is three and a quarter. Now, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna round off the edges. Now, I know a lot of people will say, lay it out first, but I like to round my edges because sooner or later you're gonna have to round them. This way, if you do it now, you don't have to worry about coming into this and trying to round it and chip the edges of your hat. So just get it done right off the front. That piece right there that just popped off was the edge of the tree, and that was a little piece of the inner bark. So as soon as I get this rounded off so we can start really going to town on it, wish all the wood was like that right there. Nice soft wood. Uh, this wood is aspen. It was cut, oh, oh, it had to be the first part of October because there wasn't snow and it was at the top of what we call Fairview Canyon. A uh, guy had some property up there and needed a tree removed. So we went up there and removed it for him. And it's great carving wood. Okay, now I know a lot of people spend a lot of time laying things out. Uh, this is a pretty small carving, so it doesn't make a lot of difference. So we want a big hat. So we're going to just put a good stop cut in right here. And I'm not sure. You can see that it's over halfway down because we want the emphasis on this carving to be the size of a hat. And, you know, a lot of these cowboys, they have... They say it's a 10-gallon hat, but it could probably hold about 20 gallons in it. Okay, I got my stop cut. So let's just come up and take that wood out. Now, whenever you carve, you do as I say, not as I do. Get your carving glove on, get your protection. Be safe. If you can see that knife is headed toward your thumb, move your thumb before you move that knife. Notice I got a little Coban on my little finger. I went out before you start to carve. You always kind of try to tune your knives up just a little bit. Well, I was in a hurry and grabbed my knives out of my box. Set them down, went to pick them back up. And wasn't watching where I grabbed and I grabbed it by the wrong end. So what I'm doing here, I'm just getting the, the brim of the hat laid out. So, you can see on that one that's already been carved that the ears sit way back underneath the hat. So, you notice that I'm pushing a lot with my thumb. That way, when my thumb is extended, that's as far as that knife goes. Uh, I also had a question about how do you wear your bolo tie in scouting. If you have the neckerchief on, put your bolo tie on first. Go ahead and put your neckerchief on like you normally would. And then you take and put a twist, a half a twist into the paracord. And then uh, pull your neckerchief down through it and then slide your head up and you can also use it to hold your neckerchief in place. It doesn't hold it real tight but it does work that way. Okay. Now we're making some progress here. Okay, so you see our hat? Our ears are going to be well in underneath the rim of our hat. So come down a ways about that far Make a good stock cut. Come on up, release it. Just basic cuts. Okay. 
I told you this wood was cut probably the first part of October. Keep the bark on it. It's still fairly green. It's not soaking wet, but it's green. When you carve aspen, it's either got to be nice green wood or really, really dry. But if it's half and half, then it's kind of a terrible wood to carve. I don't like carving on it. Okay, so on the back, you just want to kind of look to see that they're even and even here. If you're a little off, it's not a big deal. Look at half these cowboys. One side of the hat's hanging over one ear and on top of the other, so not going to make a big difference. They're character type carving. When we get to it, you can decide if you want to carve your eyes in, make a little more detail in them, or just leave them flat and paint them on. I'm not much of a painter or an artist. I'm not like these guys that can draw it and carve it. Pretty weird because I do stuff with my knife that I can't do with a pencil and I don't understand it. Okay. We're ready to start carving here. This is going to be a big guy. Look how broad he is. Might even thin that down a bit more. Okay, from this point to this point is very narrow because you look at this, see how our hat hangs down? So this is narrow, then I'm going to cut it up back in there so I have a bull rider hat. So I got my stop cut. Once again, just going to take so I can see it. And I'm going a big old nose on this dude. So come down just above, almost to the bottom of his ears. Okay, I put a stop cut in. Sorry about the length of this, but we are moving a lot of wood off of this because it's such a big piece. But it'll be a cute little cowboy when we're done. Now, depending on how far back you go here, depends on how big his nose is. And we can always go back and make it a little bit bigger. So you want to try to keep your nose in the middle. Come in, just press down. Put your tip of your knife right into that. Just cut up into that. Get that wood out of there. Okay, come over here. If you do it to one side, you better do it to the other. Okay, now when this side is a little bit bigger than the other, now I can say, well, it was. Okay, just put a little cut right there on that other side. Then we're going to take push it down. From that corner there of your nares, you're going to taper it up. Now, we want to round our eyes. We don't want See this cut here, how we kind of arched it up? Make that a little cleaner. Now we got a nice big eye socket in there. Okay, we're going to do the same on this side. Okay, let's go ahead and put our cheeks on. We're gonna put our mouth mount. Now, as you can see, I'm pretty much a knife carver. I do have a lot of gouges. They do come in handy, but when you're doing this around a campfire, you don't want a lot of tools. Pull out your pocket knife 
and every kid will come around to watch you carve. Start handing them out and you'll have a lot of lifelong friends. Okay, we're going to put a nair in while we're right there. Just push it up with your thumb a little bit more, just a little bit off there. Okay, let's come around to this side. Okay, then we can round that up just a little right like that. Take your knife, just your tip, we're going to round that off. Just gives it a little bit more of an appearance of a nair. Okay, all right. At this point, we're going to take your knife right up here. You're going to come down. Now look how high up I am. Right here to there. You'll see it a little bit clearer in just a half a second. I'm going to take some of this wood out. Uh, the knives that I prefer to carve with are all healthy. Uh, they have several different types, shapes. Okay, right here we're going to come. Try to make them as close as you can. It doesn't really matter. It's a hat. They get shaped all different ways. Uh, they're healthy knives. The reason I like them is because they hold an edge. They're always, you treat them right, they last a long time. And I sp can spend more time carving and less time sharpening. And that's why I like the Helvies. Okay, you can see we're moving out a lot of wood here. Okay, now you want to leave your outsides thick until the very end because you don't want to break the wood off, break off the rim of your hat. Got to see where my cut is. Go ahead and make that just as deep as you want. Make sure your fingers aren't underneath there because that blade slips out, comes crashing down. This side of the wood is much harder than the other side. We're gonna get it anyway. Now we're getting it so we can see it a little better. Okay, see where we got to come? We got that's going to go down quite a way, so I'm just going to work it a little bit at a time. Now, it doesn't matter if this is the first time you've tried carving, I'd tell you to go back and look at my pirate or football video and carve them. One of the, well, I'd tell you to carve 10 of them, to be honest with you. Whichever head you decide, carve 10 of them back to back. First time I started carving, it took me two nights to carve one bolo tie. And now, you know, you can see that it doesn't take that long anymore. You got to get used to how the, how the knife feels going through that wood.
Okay, we're going to come in on this side now. Helvey makes a medium rough out knife, flexible. And if you're going to do many of these cowboy hats, you definitely would like to invest in one of those knives. OCC has one that it has a notch kind of in it, and it's a longer blade. And that one's pretty good for being flexible too. But now these uh, flex knives are by far the easiest to carve and to get in here and do a cowboy hat with. This knife here is not that particular knife. It's out in my truck to be honest with you. And I don't want to go outside because it's cold. Okay, this is the part I was telling you. See how big that is right there? It's huge. And I'll show you why. Because we're going to put our knife. See why you keep your thumb out of the way of your blade? Now, that right there, that's going to be the front of your hat. That's your bull rider dip. If you look at those, they pull that hat down. I don't know if they don't want to see when they're hitting the ground or why they do that. But bull riders have a dip in their front, a lot of them. Of course, you say all bull riders, and then you say, well, so-and-so doesn't. A lot of them are starting to wear flat brim hats now, but they're not as cool to carve. This knife here is a Del Green. And see how flexible that blade is compared to this one? side as far down as we want to go. There's a small Viking over there and you kind of start to put those horns on very similar to the way that you do this one. Okay, we need to come in a little bit more right here. Even them up a little bit. It also gives you a little more room to work your knife in and out of there. So now we're just gonna put our knife, choke it up. I like that shorter handle because you can hear that end of that handle clicking on the table because it's too long of a handle. Alright, let's pull that off. And we'll go down. Okay, here we go. Let's get this thing done. We're going to put the top of his eyes, the top of his ears. So rock it down, get a good stop cut. 
top of his hat are going to come down. Now, put that taper cut in, come in on a 45, slip up and pop that out. Should pop right out. Come on the front side, do the same. And if you haven't done a lot of ears, this is the way that I like to do them. I know that Bill Birch, he did his a little bit different, and that's okay. Put your knife right there on the top of that curve. And we're just going to take little tiny ones out. Okay, cut underneath it. Watch where your tip of your knife goes so you don't cut the whole ear off. If you do, that's why they make super glue. That and to glue my fingers back on when I slip. i put that in my thumb. Okay. That's as far as we're going to go on as an ear for right now because I'm going to trim his hat back so I can get in there with my knife and work it a little better. If I slip and cut this ear off, it'll look like a kid I had in my uh, anatomy class when I was back in college. A dog had bit his ear off. Well, the back corner of it anyway. So he got the anterior superior ear notch name. All right, you see we've got all those little cuts in there. You want it pretty thin, not so thin you're gonna break it. Okay, one more slice off of there. All right, let's go ahead and put your knife right here on the corner, up into his nair. You come out, drop down, and come out. We're gonna put a great big monstrous handlebar mustache on this guy. Come out, down, back up and out. Now keep your fingers out of the way if that tip of that blade comes out. You don't want your fingers underneath it if it does. The other thing you got to remember is when you make a cut like that, keep your knife straight or you'll bust your tip off. All right, top part's roughed in, right in the middle of his nose. Curve it up a little bit. We just crack that, but it'll be all right. Right there. Gonna come right here. Swoop down, back up. If I could draw, I would take and draw on him and lay it out, but I can get him square with just shooting from the hip with my knife because, like I said, I can't draw. Okay, now we're getting his mustache laid out. There's the corner. Go ahead and make it so it stands up pretty good. And we want a big old bushy mustache in there. So you can see that we're getting one. Underneath we'll put a beard on. These guys that have that big mustache, you're not going to see a lip. It's all buried underneath all that mustache hair along with half their meal that they ate yesterday. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and turn him around. This serves two purposes when you hollow it out like this. It gives me a place to drop my paracord down. It also gives you a place to put your jawline on, kind of curve your mustache, your beard in, so it kind of blends in. You don't want any of that rough wood left on the base there because it does not paint well. It looks funny like it's not finished. Okay, now put your tip of your knife on the edge of his cheek and you just take and round that off just a little bit. Okay, now you can take
your dockyard and put some hair in it if you want. Okay, flip him up. I'm gonna work on this for a minute now. See, we're starting to form that cowboy hat. And I wanna bring my rim over just a little bit more, right to there. Take that off. It's just, I don't like the way I like it, okay? And if you don't like it, leave it there. So now we'll go back. The reason I'm rounding it off, I gotta get that wood out of the way. So I can put my blade right there. So I'm going back up underneath the hat and that gives him a lot more forehead. Flip him around. This creates the illusion of that hat being bent down. I don't know, a lot of guys when they make their videos, they have music playing in the background, but I like to know what they're doing, why they're making that cut. Does it need to be there? And what purpose, how deep it is? So now if you can look underneath there, see how far up that curls back? So now I can come do my hat. We gotta blend that in from that curve. It's kind of hard right there. Just take your time. See, I carved in the basement so my wife can't see it, so she doesn't want to get the wood chips everywhere. Okay, that eye, see how coarse it is? Just take and cut that off now. Round it off, give him some. Now, next thing we're going to do is give him part of his beard, okay? This is looking a lot better here through here. But you can see how thin that getting. The grain's going the right way, so it is pretty strong. But I don't want to snap it because I push pretty hard. Right up here next to his temple, it's a big lazy scene. It comes right into the bottom of his mustache. And right where that line is, you put your tip. right there. Give him a little bit of a contour of his cheek so you know where his face comes in. Just give him that and you can give him some dimples in there if you want. Okay, now let's finish tapering that ear up and out. Choke back on my knife. Okay, now take your knife and just round that off a little bit. You don't want a square ear. Okay, let's get this side done. That is my knife. It is, it's about the boy. Uh, that was a theme of a wood badge course that I was course director on. 
and it seems to be pretty fitting because I think a lot of times we do things for the wrong reason. But it's my handle that uh, Rich and Holly makes for me. I have a couple of those. If you're interested in one, just shoot me an email. It is the longer rough out blade that I have. Okay, we want to round this up a little bit and taper that hat up so it doesn't just come square. My God, this is getting there. This is one of the longer videos. Sorry about that, but there's just takes a lot of wood to remove. All right, let's take off that corner there. Okay, guys, look up here on his nose. He's got a big bulky forehead. So put that knife in the center of his nose and take a V cut out. Okay, now you can shape his eye. Taper it back up in there and give him a little bit more shape to his forehead and make it look like he's got some real eye sockets coming. Or not sockets, but an eyebrow line. Take time and if you take your knife and just run along the edge there and pop that out just a teeny bit like that, it will make it look like his hat, his head is fitting on the inside of his hat and it's not sitting on top of just a block of wood. Okay, we're gonna fix his ear. Okay, once again. Just make it like that. If you want to put a little smiley cowboy, give him some dimples when you paint him up. When I paint them, I don't paint my skin. I like to dunk it in a golden oak. And just give him a little bit of uh, color. But I like people to know, hey, this is a piece of wood. And they can see the wood grain in it. Okay. We notice here that our hat is, our head is fitting up into the inside here. So we're looking okay that way. We want to give him a hat band. Clean that out just a teeny bit. Okay, let's just put that right cut right here. You know, carve out 10 of these back to back and then set them out. Look at your first one compared to number 10. It's kind of funny because number six and seven will look horrible and then you get good again. So, just kind of a weird little thing the way I've noticed it goes when I carve like that anyway. But it really helps you remember the cuts and what order to do them in. Now, just take your knife, grab that edge.
you can take your dockyards and put some uh, hair on him. I wonder where to get dockyards at. I buy mine from Treeline and Provo. He, mag he uh, advertises in all of the wood carving illustrated. Call PJ, tell him you watched one of my videos and he'll tell you exactly what I use and what you need. Okay, see right here on this hat, it's rounded up more than it is on this side. So I just want to take my knife and round him off. Now I'm just gonna show you a real quick way to do some eyes. Go deep right here on that next to your nose. Come in and pop that little sliver out. Come over on this side, take that out right there. Okay, so you get a nice little rounded mound. Now these aren't really anything too fancy, okay? But people say, oh, you want more detail? Well, it only takes a minute. Right there, take a good cut, just wrap it around. Okay, come up, relieve it. Okay, there you go. Top of his eyebrow, come in right here. Come up. Put it in right there. So we're just taking the little chips out. Kind of a little three-step process. Got to get that out. A little chip doesn't want to come. Okay, come in, put in the bottom eye lad. Just like that. Come around. Okay, now give me, he's been out in the sun. Okay, now the other thing you can do is come right here, come up, do a little relief cut, come in, take that little chunk out, take your nose and just kind of round it back. Gonna hurry and do that on this side, right there, right there, right there. Okay, now take your knife. Okay. Just because of the time, well, do we got time to put the other eye in, Caden? Okay, I'm gonna put the other eye in right there. Caden is my son that's videotaping for me. Take that and just clean it out so it's nice and clean. Okay, and then we can wrap it around, drop your eyebrow in, take that corner off just a little bit more. One a little more eye, upper eyelid. Okay, right here, about the same. The other side, and push up right to there. You can put as much detail in these as you want, or as little. Just depends on how much time you want to spend on them. But I carve uh, quite a few of these for the kids that go to Timberline. That's uh, youth training out here and for wood badge groups. So. I got to get them done pretty quick. I've made over 7,000 of these. Okay, this is still bugging me. Let's clean that little hair up. Okay, take that off. Okay, go ahead, brush him, dunk him in some. Uh, I like to dunk them in uh, half uh, linseed oil, half turpentine, it's, it's, let it set and dry and it makes the wood a lot harder. I also think it makes them easier to paint, but that's just my opinion. And that's your cowboy. Go get a dockyard and tool him up. Have a great time. Happy carving.